Hey, it's Ben here, and here we're going to have a look at a few different ways in which we can think about aligning text within Final Cut Pro. Now, the first thing I want to look at is these grids and guides overlays. So basically, what this is going to allow you to do is to lay out some grids, as you would have in other applications like InDesign or Illustrator, and then align your text to them. Now, essentially, these are lines were with a transparent PNG. So you kind of overlay them within Final Cut Pro. Now I've downloaded these already. And the way that you add these is go to the view menu and then choose custom overlay. And then from here, you can add a custom overlay. And I've already downloaded the grids and guides overlay. You can see we've got some four by three grids, padded grids, some six column grids, and a variety of other different kind of random squares and circles. We're just going to add the six column grid. So we'll open that up. And essentially what this is going to give you is a little guide that you can align your type to. So once you've got that, we're going to jump into our titles and generators. And we're going to come down here to our bumper and opener titles. We'll just stretch these out a bit more so we can see the titles a bit more clearly. And what we're looking for in here is the basic title. So we'll drag this down to the timeline. Just going to stretch this out a little bit. And essentially here we can then work on where this title is going to sit. So the first thing you need to decide is where your text is going to be aligned. So if we come up to our inspector with the text selected, you can see here we're aligned to the center at the moment. With this bigger body of text, I'm going to align to the left. And you can see that's going to change the way that it aligns when I actually have it aligned to the left, to the middle, or to the right. So the important thing here is to align it first so that when you move the title to wherever you want it to be, then basically it's going to sit nicely in that spot. So we're going to align to this left-hand purple line, the first of our six-column layout. And then we're going to jump into our web browser, and I've generated some placeholder text. We're just going to grab that, copy it, and then come back into Final Cut Pro, and we'll paste this in. And you can see that the issue here we get in Final Cut Pro is that this text doesn't wrap. So if we want to use the, the kind of basic title here, we're going to have to kind of manually wrap this. So the first thing you want to do in this case is just make sure that your text is the size that you want it because you're going to add line breaks in here to kind of wrap it to this box. So I'm basically going to come along here and add a line break where I see that line should move to the next. But you can see that obviously issue with this really is now that when we rescale this text or add any kind of editing to it then we're going to need to again make those line breaks the second time so we can add some line spacing to make this look a bit better it's kind of sitting nicely within the center of this page for the moment and so within this kind of scenario we can't use this justify last left option and so we have some real limitations with how we align this type but the guides are useful for kind of positioning this so what we're going to do now is have a look at a type plugin that allows us to do this a bit more seamlessly so this is my custom type frame plugin for final cut pro and basically we're going to jump back into final cut pro and do the same thing with this type plugin so i'm just going to delete this layer that we had for the moment and we will jump to my titles we'll come to the custom type frame plugin drop it down to the timeline and i'm going to stretch this out and basically here we can paste in the same text i'm going to set the align option to the left just as we did before so that we can position that up at the top left align that with that purple line and then we're going to paste in our block of text and you can see right away it's wrapping to the width of this. So if we come to the generator options, the title and generator options here, little t, then you can see we've got a left margin which we can modify and adjust. We want to keep that as it was. And then we've got a right margin that we can modify and adjust. So we've just got that nicer level of control. So if we now use this block text, you can see it's going to space out nicely. So let's just give this a nice title. We'll highlight our type. Let's go down and change the color of this. So I'm going to pick out a black color. We'll make this a bit bigger, just the title. And then maybe we'll switch up the font as well for this kind of header. So you can see now we've got some nice control over where this type aligns. We can obviously get the type to align there. We've got some other options in our text frame as well. We don't have to have a fill for our background. Um, works quite well here. We can change the opacity for that fill so we can have it 
reveal a little bit of that background and then we can play around with a color as well. So maybe we'll go for a kind of lighter blue, reveal that background just a little bit and then we'll come back to our type and I'm just going to add a little bit more line spacing in my type. And I've got some extra lines here which is why my box is so big down at the bottom there. So again this option will give you some better ways of aligning text. There's also some other custom overlays that are available within the, the package you can download. So I've got some five by three grids. So actually kind of showing you a bit more of a vertical and horizontal grid. And then with the custom type frame, we can obviously slide this number up so that it's gonna fill that space nicely. So we're getting a nice fitting of the text within the space that we decide is gonna work for our design. Let's add a little bit of a transition to this. So I just used Command and T to add a transition and we'll let this play through. You can see the text is gonna fade in nicely, nicely aligned there. We can also come to view, turn off the custom overlay so that we can see we're getting a little bit of that video poking through, but as you can see, nice and clear to kind of watch that back. There are some other overlays in there as well, which are quite fun. So we have this circles custom overlay. And so with this, you can set this up. So perhaps our text in this instance will appear kind of to match up with some of these grids. We'll just kind of get it to match the edge of some of those circles and reduce the width of it. See what we get, actually that's pretty perfect. And then what we can do is we can come in, we're gonna grab an image of a jellyfish and we'll drop this down to the timeline. And then we can use these grids that we've got to align that. So actually I'm gonna add from my effects down at the bottom, we'll add a mask. So we'll add a shape mask to this. I'm gonna take off most of the feather at the edge of this and then we'll just try and get this image with the width in a circle or as close as we can. And then we'll use the transform options to kind of move this into one of those circles. So we can have some fun with this actually. So if we leave this one here, I'm gonna stretch this out, we'll move it back to the beginning, zoom in a little. And so what we'll do, we'll just modify our shape mask, I have to turn the transform properties off just so that we're getting it almost perfectly within that circle. And then if we use the transform options here, we're gonna duplicate this and we'll take a version of this down to another circle and we'll then just do this a few times so we get some nice layers there. And what we'll do is we'll reframe each of these jellyfish within the circle so we get a little bit of a close up of different parts of it and nice kind of collage. We could use different images in there, but I just wanna use this one image for the moment. So we'll just stretch this out a bit so we can see more of these layers. So now I'm gonna turn off the transform And then actually we'll just change the scale of this and then we'll tuck in the circle. We'll just find a little bit more of a zoomed in spot to this and then we'll jump back to the transform to move that into there. And then we'll just kind of keep going. So just turning those off so I can see it a bit better. We're gonna enlarge this We'll turn off the transform options and then we'll move this down to these cool looking tentacles. And we'll jump back to the transform options, move this back into this circle and then turn off transform and just kind of loop through these different options until we have all these circles filled with a little bit of a different part of that 
jellyfish. I'm going to pause there, get a kind of general idea of what we're aiming towards. Here we could also add some effects, so maybe we would pick one of these ones on the left, add a color effect, so we could pick a tint or a colorize, and then we'll increase the intensity, we'll make this kind of a different set of colors. Okay, so you can see just by using these custom overlays, we can start to lay things out quite nicely. So if I, again, select all these clips, do Command T to add that transition at the beginning, I could offset these a little bit. So we'll play this through, and you can see these are gonna fade in nicely kind of randomized a little bit in the position just by accident more than anything else, but that actually works quite nicely. One other piece perhaps that we could incorporate is to use the Brett FX power tools here to add an outline to our image. So we could start to frame these images off. That could give it a nice kind of graphic look. So you're gonna get nice kind of width and design to these images. So some of these have just been scaled a bit differently, so they're showing up as a different width, so you might need to play with that a little bit. So some nice ideas about how we can think about using these custom overlays to align things up, depending on what kind of grid you need. And then also some of the more fun overlays to kind of add some design elements in there as well. And if you have ideas for new overlays or something you don't see here, then please do leave a comment below and hopefully between these different elements there's something useful there that you can use in your videos either the layer masking to create those circles or using the the custom type frame to actually get a text frame that will wrap to your video within Final Cut Pro again if you do have any questions then please leave a comment below otherwise I look forward to seeing you on the next video